That is very much a blow. That was a, a big, it was a blow. Those are the words of a grieving mother over the news of the removal of her missing son's burnt out truck. The truck, which brought so much media attention to the Marshall Iwasa case, no longer sits on the Brian Waddington trailhead. It was removed by a private citizen belonging to the Varsity Outdoor Club, a group of nature enthusiasts who maintain hiking trails in B.C. Jeff Mottershead says he single-handedly cut the truck into pieces, then hauled it off to a landfill. He writes about it on the Varsity Outdoor Club blog. It was clearly something that shouldn't be there. Modder's head says he took it upon himself to remove the vehicle when it became clear it was becoming an environmental hazard and a trash dump. It was leaking oil, it was leaking transmission fluid, the battery had burned down and there was lead all over the place. Having a, uh, a burnt out truck with debris all over the place and uh, a bunch of stuff thrown in the back already uh, is just a invitation for people to leave garbage. Lots of people who were not um, aware, they were, you know, doing like gangster poses and stuff um, by the truck and they end up on Facebook. It's like, it's not the kind of thing that you want to see if, uh, if you're the family. And speaking of the family, Iwasa's mother says they were crushed when they found out after the fact because they viewed the truck almost like Marshall's final resting place, even though it's uncertain whether or not he was ever at that particular spot. It was shocking. It, again, feels like, okay, another another thing of Marshall's has been destroyed. Like, we have nothing left. Of Marshall. Tammy Johnson says the truck should have been treated like a crime scene and could have offered some evidence. Once the police lines are gone, then then there's no evidentiary value anymore because what does any DNA evidence or anything mean like A, after it's already burned out and B, after a whole ton of people have left their own trash in the back of the truck because they feel it's a garbage can. Johnson also says no one ever approached them to ask how they would feel about the truck's removal. It would have given us an opportunity as a family to discuss it and to say, you know, what what do you what what is best to do here? And chances are we would have understood. Johnson says had they known the family might have made one last trek up there to say goodbye to the truck, and her family was hoping to someday put up a memorial at the site. Did it ever occur to anybody from your group? I asked Motter's head if it ever family, occurred to him to reach out to the family before removing okay. the truck. I guess, obviously, based on what you said, um, they, I should have consulted with them. Like, I, I feel I, I blew that, and I'm sorry about that. If they want me to personally put up a memorial, I will do it. For Bridge City News, I'm Jeanette Roche. Now, BCN reached out to the LPS about the truck's removal, and in an email, they told us that the missing person investigation in relation to Marshall Iwasa remains open. LPS is aware that the truck has been removed. The site where it was found was processed by police quite some time ago, and the scene was subsequently released.